In this episode, we travel back to Acme Aero to show you exactly how Stoll aircraft shocks are built. Coming up right now. My name is Steve Jessup. I'm the head design engineer for Acme Aero. I'm going to go into a little bit of um, explanation here for our, uh, our our theory behind the design of our shocks and kind of show you the materials that we use and why we use them. So right now we've got a uh, uh, raw body material tube that we use on our cub shocks and our stall shocks. We have uh, shaft material that we use for our cub shocks and then we have an assortment of springs that we use in the uh, stinger tail wheel as well as uh, the cub shocks. So. Start off with the body material. It's a it's a proprietary material. It's custom designed and custom drawn to our specifications. It's seamless tubing. Um, it's able to withstand the the loads and the pressures that we put in it in all in all of the shock designs that we do. So it's pretty universal, which is nice. We don't have to go and get different material for different different shock designs. Uh, we can use it on just about everything that we manufacture and sell. The springs here, you'll see a couple different springs. Uh, two of these are the taller ones that uh, are going the cub shocks. Uh, they're different rates, although they look very similar. They're, they're different rates and they're designed to handle different uh, loads of aircraft, depending on which type of aircraft it, go, it goes on. And then down here, we've got um, a couple other springs that go in our Pro Series shocks as well as a spring that goes in our st stinger tail wheel. All right, so this is probably the biggest question we get is, what's inside this thing? Why is it so awesome? And uh, we're gonna show you. So I've already installed our divider piston. I got one here just to show you. So we're separating the gas from the oil. You can look down inside here. You can see that. So now, fill her up with oil. What we have did with our oil viscosity is uh, you know, a good all around, we see heat from the exhaust dumping on these things. Uh, you know, it's a different side of, of heat from the normal off-road world where we're cycling stuff and we're really building a lot. Um, we want to maintain uh, good control when we're taxiing, you know, so we're not uh, tipping around on wings. So we've got uh, a good setup in the piston with between our bleed and our valve stack, and we can go through a little bit of that when we get to sinking. But um, here is what we've got. So we've already talked about our our triple redundant seal pack in the seal head, our springs, uh, we've got our welded shaft, so we're, we're safety holding uh, the spring pack and everything welded and with a nut, so we're, uh, we're holding everything there, our compression and rebound stacks. So let's sink one and uh, see how it goes. So there's a small bleed hole in the piston as you can see here, and we've got different setups depending on the, the weight and applications of the plane. Uh, so we're letting this slowly bleed through here, and that's how we're going to uh, control your low speed. When, when I talk about low speed and high speed and the, in the shock world, we're talking about shaft velocities. So let's say we'll talk in inches per second. Uh, taxiing around uh, through the field, slow stuff is around two inches a second. So that is controlled through a bleed hole. Uh, you know, at that point, the shims really aren't opening. This is a good example of a cover shim. And we'll talk through a little bit about how oil is coming through in a compression hit. It's coming through and it's just lifting this spring. So we've got different designs and different styles of piston and shim stacks depending on what applications we're trying to meet. If this is full blown competition plane or back country or super heavy, what we're trying to do with it. So uh, that's the nice thing about a, a good tunable, serviceable shock is that we can really tailor what you need through our setups. You know, we're not locked into, hey man, this is the only thing we got off the shelf. It's all, it's all super custom to what you're trying to do. And with the years that we've been doing it, you know, we've got a good, a good pile of notes of, of different applications and different setups. So you know, by the time you get it, we've already sorted it out. All right, so we've sunk enough to where you can see when we poured in our oil, we get pretty close because we're filling this entire shock cavity, the spring, 
and everything through the oil. So now we're just pushing out the excess and we're going to get down and sink the seal head. So that's to the threads. We're threading on the body cap and the seal head for strength. Now we're going to release any pressure atmospheric behind the divider piston so we can really sink the shock at this point. So we're going to thread that in. Now there's that o-ring there with a little oil behind it. We'll blow that off. Sometimes you guys are circling the earth and in need of something fast. You might see a little wetness of this assembly grease around the seal head when you get it. It's not that it's leaking, it's just that cavity there. Alright, so now we're assembled. Now let's charge it. This is by far the biggest question that we get. And I might ask some of the guys here. So we're charging. When the guys are checking it at home, it's it's in the air. It's hanging. Unloaded. Unloaded. So we talked some when we were assembling about how the high pressure that we got. We're going to charge it here to 250. Now you can see that's a little high. If you've got your, your gauge at home, so we're unloaded. We're going to bleed that off a little bit. And we're setting to 250. Now we open that. Now we've un Now we're charged. We'll wash it up. This is a good chance to, even after all of our precautions, to check and make sure that we don't have anything leaking. Check around the Schrader valves. Getting all the oil off. That's your assembled shot. Now we also because of adjustability we'll have what's our number of camber of changes plus degree is a quarter of an inch. So you guys have specced out what you needed here so we've got some adjustability left in the length of the himes there so what we'll do is is we've got some uh, some little pieces. We can measure that, make sure your link's right. That's an assembled shot. If you're finding value in this video, hit the like button on this video, and it's really important that you subscribe as it helps me get sponsors like Airworks, Kit Plane Parts, Acme Aero, Edge Performance Engines, and Viking Aircraft Engines. And be sure to check out the links in the description below for special offers from our affiliates. Let's jump back in. All right, so we've sunk our shock. I had this one up. We're doing a lot of side-by-side -side work also. So uh, while we're talking through and just talking about velocities, I thought it would be good to, to show you how we dyno stuff and why and give you an example of shaft velocities when we're talking in the shock world, we'll talk about speeds. Everybody says, well, I, you know, I, I'm really, I'm going fast. Well, I'm not talking about speeds. I'm talking about shaft velocities and speeds. So we're saying two inches, 10 inches a second, big hits are 20 inches a second. So what I'll do is I'll show you two inches a second. That's kind of our off runway around field stuff. And I'll explain how we're controlling that through the bleed holes and what we've tuned there. So as you can see a shaft velocity here, this is two inches a second. Uh, when we were sinking the shock, you saw how slow it had to go down. Uh, that's where anything past two inches a second, we're starting to open the shim stack. But here, it's through a bleed hole. Uh, so now we'll move on. And you can kind of see what you're talking about shock-wise. You can equate it back to me if you say, hey man, it feels good here, but I'm really struggling in this application. All right, so now we've got a shaft velocity of 10 inches a second. Uh, at that point, we're opening the shim stack. This is really more of a, 10 inches a second is a good 
normal landing speed. You know, when you guys aren't augging this thing in, you know, this is normal working velocities. Uh, when you get into faster stuff, and we'll zing it up here to 20, is when you're hitting square edge, when you're hitting boulders and creek bottoms, when you're when you're really jabbing this thing in. So through all these different velocities and the research we've did dynoing, you know, we'll see where we need to really concentrate on performance aspects. So let's look at 20, so you can say, oh yeah, I've clobbered some stuff and I've hit like that. That's 20 inches a second, that's hit. that's clobbering. Uh, you know, the hardest hits we'll see, the hardest hits we'll see on your stuff is 40, 60 inches, if you're really, if you're coming in and, and, and you've got a stump poking up or a rock poking up and it's really popping the wheel, uh, that's where a gas charged shock like what we're making really shines is the fact that we're separating the oil from the nitrogen and we're lessening the chances of cavitation on high velocity hits. So think of it just like a boat, you know, if we're sitting in the cove and we throw all this thing up, that prop is churning the water and we're not really going anywhere. It's happening the same thing with a piston if we can't control it with that high gas pressure. So we're keeping the oil from churning up and cavitating and uh, really getting angry. So that I help really coaches you up on when you talk to us of it performs well here, this is where it really shines and this is why I like what it's doing versus what I had before, you know. So uh, that's some of the work that we go through. You know, we're not just throwing washers at this thing. Um, you know, everything is scienced out, uh, recorded, dynoed, so that's how we make a quality product. If you haven't already, I invite you right now to subscribe, hit the like button, and follow us on Facebook and Instagram. And we now have a podcast that can be found on iTunes and Google Play. I'll see you in the next episode. Thanks for watching.